All right, everybody, get your King James Bible. Turn to Isaiah chapter 7. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now, everybody, a little bit of background. One of the confusing things about the Bible is sometimes it'll talk about the present, then it'll talk about the future, and then it'll go back to the present. Uh, another, th And that's what Isaiah chapter 7 does. There's another thing, too. The Assyrians and the Syrians, the Assyrians and the Syrians, they're related, but they're evidently not the same people. I, I don't see a huge distinction where I can uh, tell they're different or the same in the Bible. And the secular sources, I don't know. It's just, to me, it's kind of confusing. But it seems like the Assyrians conquered Syria. And the capital of Syria was Damascus. And the capital of northern Israel was Samaria. And the main tribe of northern Israel was Ephraim. And there was actually a time when Syria and northern Israel actually attacked Judah. So that is sort of kind of like the American Civil War where the South attacked the North and the North attacked the South. And these preachers that tell you that they're all the same people uh, are probably liars. I mean, you know, how can you go to Bible college for four to four years? And even if the Bible college is teaching you garbage, you're supposed to read on your own. I mean, you know, you've never read the Bible on your own. You know, you just go to Bible college and you don't even bother to read the main textbook. Really? Yeah. All right, Isaiah chapter 7, and verse 1. And it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, king of Judah, that reason the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Shemaliah, king of Israel. Okay, so you got the king of Judah, king of Syria, and the king of Israel. Uh, so they... So the king of uh, Syria and the king of Israel, uh, let's see, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. And it was told the house of David, you know, King David, the um, who was made, you know, the head of Judah, the king of Judah. And it was told the house of David, saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim. So here it is, Syria and northern Israel, Ephraim, Samaria, was going to war against Judah. And it was told, told the house of David, saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim. And his heart was moved, and the heart of his people, as the trees of the wood are moved with the wind. Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, Go now, I'm sorry, go forth now to meet Ahaz, thou and Shir Jashub, thy son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field, and say unto him, Take heed and be quiet, fear not, neither be faint hearted, for the two tails of the smoking firebrands. For the fierce anger of reason with Syria and of the son of Remaliah. Now, what are they talking about? Fire, the two tails of the smoking firebrands. Well, the seventh chapter of Isaiah roughly corresponds to the seventh book of the Bible which is the book of Judges. So, 
Let's take a look at something. In the book of Judges, in 15 and uh, chapter 15 and verse 4, uh, what are they talking about? The tales of Syria and the tales of the king of Israel. Well, they don't have tales, so obviously it's a figure of speech. But Samson was a judge, a judge, uh, and in uh, Judges 15, 4, and Samson went and caught 300 foxes and took firebrands and turned tail to tail and put a firebrand in the midst between two tails. Uh, what he did was he took two foxes, tied their tails together with a... Uh, I guess a firebrand, you know, a stick that would be burning. I don't know what he wrapped it with. Uh, maybe tar, pitch, I don't know. And then he led them off into the field of the Philistines to burn up their crops. And uh, that didn't make the uh, Philistines very happy. But can you imagine 150 uh, foxes running around and every time they go through a field, it goes on fire. Oh, yeah. So, then in Isaiah 7, 1, Remaliah, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. But yet, in Judges 1, 8, now the children of Judah had fought against Jerusalem. See, in the book of Judges, Jerusalem was a... Canaanite possession and they were you know Israel was to take the land of Canaan and then it was renamed Israel so I guess that is the connection there all right so verse 4 of Isaiah chapter 7. And say unto him, Take heed and be quiet, fear not, neither be faint-hearted, for the two tails of these smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of reason of Syria and the son of Remaliah, because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Remaliah have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, Let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us, and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabeel. Thus saith the Lord God, It shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. Verse 8. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is reason, and within threescore and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. So in uh, 65 years from now, when this was written, um, I believe the Assyrians took Israel into captivity, but I'm not 100% sure. A lot of the dates I'm not sure of. All I know is the King James Bible is not in chronological order as far as the Old Testament is concerned. Verse 9. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria. And the head of Samaria is Remaliah's son, if ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God, ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David. Now remember, David, King David, you know, of Judah, the tribe of Judah. Hear ye now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men? Is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will ye weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now in Chapter 6, I went into this in a little bit more detail, so I'm going to skip over that uh, this time. So if you want to 
know more about the virgin, go to uh, Isaiah chapter 6 commentary that I did the previous study. Um, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And a lot of the Bible scholars will tell you that this word virgin really doesn't mean virgin. It just means young woman. So Mary was just young when she had Jesus. Thus, effectively, they're trying to uh, deny the virgin birth and deny that there's anything special about Jesus being born. They're liars. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her kings. So, looks like the king of Israel and the king of Judah will be uh, forsaken. Verse 17. The Lord shall bring upon thee and upon thy people and upon thy father's house days that have not come from the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, even the king of Assyria. So I guess Assyria is going to conquer Syria and, of course, it conquered Israel. And Assyria also conquered parts of Judah, too. They tried to take uh, Jerusalem, but they couldn't do it. Uh, an angel of the Lord smote over 100,000 of their troops. So that didn't work. Verse 18, It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall hiss for the fly that is in the uttermost part of the rivers of Egypt and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. And they shall come and shall rest all of them in the desolate valleys and in the holes of the rocks and upon all the thorns and upon all bushes. In the same day shall the Lord shave with a razor that is hired, namely, by them beyond the river, by the king of Assyria, the head and the hair of the feet. And it shall also consume the beard. And it shall come to pass in that day that a man shall nourish a young cow and two sheep. And it shall come to pass for the abundance of milk that they shall give. He uh, that they shall give, he shall eat butter. For butter and butter and honey shall every one eat that is left in the land. And it shall come to pass in that day that every place shall be where there were a thousand vines at a thousand silverlings, it shall be, it shall even be for briars and thorns. I covered that in a previous Isaiah study too. With arrows and with bows shall men come thither because all the land shall become briars and thorns. And in all hills that shall be digged with the mat mattock, there shall not come thither the fear of briars and and thorns, but it shall be for the sending forth of oxen and for the treading of lesser cattle. Now, in Second Kings chapter 16, uh, so Ahaz sent messengers to Giglath Pileser, king of Assyria, Assyria, saying, I am thy servant and thy son come up and save me out of the hand of the king of Syria and out of the hand of the king of Israel, which rise up against me. And Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasures of the king's house and sent it for a present to the king of Assyria. So here it is, the king of Judah, Ahaz, uh, is bribing with gold and silver the king of Assyria to go fight against the king of Syria, and the king of Israel. Verse 9. And the king of Assyria, Assyria, hearkened unto him, for the king of Assyria went up against Damascus, the capital of Syria, and took it and carried the people of it captive to Kir and slew reason. All right. So let's take... All right, in 2 Kings chapter 17, and verse 1. In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, began Hoshea, the son of Elah, to reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. 
You know, people, you got the king of Israel, you got the king of Judah, they had wars against each other, and these preachers are going to tell you they're all the same? Really? All right. Uh, Hosea, the son of Elah, to, to reign in Samaria, which was the capital of Israel, uh, to reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. So he wasn't a, he did bad things, but he wasn't as bad as some of the others, in other words. But not as the kings of Israel that were before him. Against him came up Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, a Syria, and Hoshea became his servant and gave him presents. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hoshea. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hoshea. For he had sent messengers to, to So, king of Egypt, and brought no present to the king of Assyria, as he had done year by year. Therefore the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years. Now Samaria is the capital city of Israel. Verse 6, In the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away, and carried Israel away into Assyria, and placed them in Hala and in Habor by the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord, their God which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods, and worked and walked in the statutes of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel and the kings of Israel, which they had made. So, and the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right, against the Lord their God, and they built them high places in all their cities from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced, fenced city. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. And there they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. You want to know why the Lord uh, carried them away to Assyria? Well, if they weren't going to serve the Lord, he says, well, you can go serve the king of Assyria. Now, what I find interesting is that he placed Israel, in verse 6, it says, in the cities of the Medes. And we read about the Medes and the Chaldeans, uh, along with the Babylonians later on because they were the ones that took Judah captive a number of years later. I don't know exactly how many years later it was. Uh, I think it was like 250 years later. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that because I'm not sure. All I know is in Jeremiah 3.8, God said he divorced Israel but he did not divorce Judah for the promise that he made to King David uh, about his always having a man on the throne. So, and then when Israel was taken captive, she was moved, removed out of her land to another place. And, uh, and then when Assyria collapsed because of the Babylonian Empire that rose up, they conquered the Assyrians, well, then Israel decided to hightail it out of Dodge because the Assyrians were nasty people. Uh, the capital of the Assyrian Empire was Nineveh, and 
guess where Jonah went? He went to Nineveh. That's exactly where he went. And Nineveh's god was, um, oh, I can't think of his name right now. What an idiot. But, uh, it, oh, Dagon. Dagon. Thank you, Lord. Dagon. He looked like a mermaid. He was a fish from the waist down and a man from the waist up. Uh, think uh, Disney's The Little Mermaid. That's that's what Dagon looked like. So, um, so when um, Jonah was spit up on the beach by a whale, a fish, they thought, oh, Dagon sent us a prophet. We need to listen to this guy, you know. So even though uh, Jonah tried to run away and not fulfill God's purpose, uh, God's hand was in on the deal, and uh, Nineveh repented. So, you know, I I find this cuff fascinating, but I guess, uh, you know, I'm weird. What can I tell you? All right. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to them. In Jesus' name, amen.